Today we're going to talk about some key takeaways from the Great Debate webinar. We're going to look at some of the best trading setups of the week and the importance of 25 pip and 50 pip movements from the opening session. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Friday we've had some monster moves in some of the British pound crosses. Today we're going to talk about some of the key takeaways from the Great Debate webinar. I've included the link below. A tremendous amount of people uh, that have asked about watching that um, that didn't get to see it live. But uh, again, the link's below. Uh, six traders, Adam Webb, Nick Bavell, Rolf Schlotman, Blake Morrow, Anthony Crudelli, and Ryan Paisy, uh, each going one on one with each other with Chris Weston from Pepperstone and in three separate uh, webinars. Absolutely pure gold. Uh, I, I, it exceeded my expectations because I think it was just really powerful uh, some, to see and hear the different perspectives of six professional traders who trade different markets and trade completely different but just hearing them talk about their process their approach to the markets their individual experience how they view the bigger picture of the markets in terms of setting up their trades and I just think that there's a lot of solid gold there for traders to just again building a framework for being a professional running your trading like a business I had I had five pages of notes uh, and I think I was probably more than that. There was just a ton of information there, just little bits here and there, hearing them talk and comparing strategies and very powerful. So if you're interested in watching the replay, the link is down below. I'm just gonna talk about a couple of the key takeaways that I got. And um, we're gonna look at some of the best setups from this week. Just to clarify again, we talked about the average movement is 25 to 50 pips and it's important to understand as the day evolves that there's a bigger structure potentially setting up for a bigger trade. I know a lot of times the movements uh, at, at the beginning of the Europe London session traders are convinced they've missed the move when in reality all the market may be doing is either working one side of the market back and forth in terms of expanding the range but also trapping traders and, and taking technicals in a direction that, that we the retail market perceives is the trade only to really be taking them further and further away to shift the market later on, either in London or the US session. So we're gonna look at some of those setups, high of the week, low of the week, same stuff every week. There's a similar trade setup, so we'll look at some of those. But talking about some of the key takeaways, Every single one of these guys had a specific framework and process on how they make their set up their trades. And, and this is sort of what I'm, I'm going to focus on today with letting the market evolve so that you can target the trades instead of chasing the moves thinking that that's, that's the trade. And then sometimes they're setting a trade at the high of the day or the low of the day. But it's important to understand that there's potentially a bigger structure setting up in that 12 candle window at the high or low of the day. All of them tend to have a bigger picture approach, uh, especially Adam Webb, uh, Nick Bovell. I think Blake Morrow talked a bit about this as well, but Ryan Paisy especially. They look at the bigger macro drivers of the global markets, uh, commodities, interest rates, central bank policies, a lot of stuff that helps them shape their thesis. And one of the big things that some of these gentlemen talked about was they're not so concerned about trying to make a trade. Like, you know, as a retail trader, we're looking for specific types of trade setups. These guys were more concerned about yield, targeting, you know, perhaps options or different strategies that would produce a yield at the end of the, at the, end of the game, rather than just targeting specific moves to scalp profits. So managing their risk, but spreading it over the bigger picture over a longer time frame, looking to capture the yield. Now again, not all the traders were, were talking about that, but that was something that sort of, again, I talk about having a bigger picture in mind, you know, where do you want to be in 30 days, 90 days next year, even with your process and your framework. 
They looked at using different instruments to hedge their positions, you know, especially when commodity prices might be ballooning out like we had with oil and different things, but ways to use the currency pairs that, that are heavily commodity based, just some different strategies that they talked about in terms of using that to hedge different positions. And the other thing, they all have talked about having, you know, bad days, and I'm talking major blowout days where you, you know, again, you just, that framework and that process is what keeps you uh, on track, knowing that over the longer sample of, of your trade size data, you're going to produce a profit, even though the individual ups and downs, sometimes you're going to get, you know, a kick in the pants. So it's good to know that, you know, I'm not the only one having bad days. They don't necessarily have a high win rate. So one of the gentlemen talked about not having a great win rate, but what they did, you know, they talked about how the retail market is convinced about risking 1% on every single trade, whereas they target specific trade setups. And when their ideal trade setups start to evolve, they're prepared to take bigger size on those. And when they win big, they win big. So when they lose, they take small losses. They may have a very low win rate, 30 to 40%, but their winners are exceptionally larger, exceptionally larger than their losing trades. They all trade differently in different markets. So the great thing about this one, and this is where I think you'll pick up a lot of really excellent, I mean, the knowledge in that room was incredible and there's something for everybody. But what's amazing is that they all trade different markets and they all have different strategies, but Interesting to hear them talk about process and their approach because that's what separates the professionals from the retail market in the majority of cases, managing their risk, but having a, a framework and a process to approach the market in a specific model that they trade based on. No matter how you trade, you need to, you need to run it like a business. And I thought that that's so powerful because if you start to approach it that you're running a business, a trading business, and you have to separate yourself apart from you know the desire to have a profit on every single trade and you're worried about the outcome and you're trading your own capital and start to set everything up as a business in terms of your approach to your trades the way that you manage execute and go through the entire trading process and then assessing your performance assessing your your trades and assessing over larger sample sizes how you're performing and just like a professional athlete, just like any skilled performance activity, you have to be training and monitoring and improving all the time. You need to know what your niche is. And I think that was really came home clear that all six of these guys trade differently, but they trade what they feel they resonate best with in terms of not only the markets, but also their style of trading. So again, just hearing them talk, I think every single one of those guys left me with, you know, a page of notes just from hearing them talk and drop little little nuggets that I, you know, an aha moment that fits into the puzzle. And I think you'll get a lot of value out of that. So link is down below. Take advantage of it. Uh, I think each one's probably an hour long, maybe uh, roughly give or take, but just just absolutely worth it. And uh, you can watch them at your own convenience. Now I wanted to talk about also the importance of 25 and 50 pip increment movements. We're going to look at some uh, setups from this week. We're going to go through some of the, the um, pairs and look at how they've evolved over the week and the importance of 25 and 50 pip movements away from the beginning of the day and how those levels can be key levels in terms of setting out your thesis for the day, understanding where you may identify for a sell high setup or a buy low setup, whether it's in London or New York, and how they can be powerful to understand if the market is working the low or the high or both sides and setting up for a bigger trade. So hopefully you get value from today's video traders. Again, uh, take advantage of the great debate replay down below, hit the link, have a great weekend. Let's look at some charts, have a great trading session, and may the markets go with you. Good day, trader Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Looking today at the importance of 25 and 50 pip movements from the beginning of the day. Typically, uh, when the market starts trading in Asia, we are inside of a 25 pip box. 
as the market expands the range, these 25 pip box movements have significance in that the market will either continue to extend out and 25 to 50 pips are the average extended range unless the market is in a strong trend, which we'll show an example of. That typically will happen in the middle of the high and low of the week. But when we look at our Asian range and the market starts to extend out into the next timings, these 25 pip boxes are significant because the market will extend out to a certain distance. It's formed a new high just at the open of the Europe 12 candle window for pulling back and then hitting it a second time with an engulfment and pin hammer. Market makes its way back down through the low of the Asian session, which again is a plus 25 pip movement to the low of the day before again hitting it a second time, going sideways, giving us a pin hammer for a move back towards the high. So again, this is an example of an open auction style of day where the market just trades off the high and off the low before trending later in the US session. So the market extended just over 25 pips above into the next box, so we're in the next box, and then did the same on the downside. The market then traded outside of the 50 pip box and continued the move down. When in the next Asian session, the market trades down below before giving us our new low. So we have a low of the day in place. And this is Tuesday, so we have the high of the week on Monday. And we're forming a low in the Asian session, just below the 25 pip box, before consolidating, giving us a type 3M, and then hitting the low again, extending the move out. We're down at the next 25 pip box increment. So again, we're in a box here, 25 pips. They work the low, extending it out. So in the previous example, they were working the high and the low back and forth. In Tuesday's example, we extended the low, so they made a new low. They took out the low of the day. They extended that low, pulled back inside. Then they extended the low again down to the next 25 pip box before one push, two push, three pushes back inside which is a 25 pip stop hunt back inside on traders who shorted the market. And then they hit the low a third time, dropping 25 and then 50 pips. So they dropped it to the first 25 pip increment and then the second 25 pip increment for a 50 pip move. So they dropped it down 25 pips, pulled it back inside dropped it down and hit the low a third time, extending that to the lower 50 pip box, 25 below the Asian range, and then 25 more. Whereas the previous day, they traded back and forth. On Tuesday, they extended the low, they extended the low, they extended the low a third time. And this is where the larger structure can set up for traders to identify for a bigger trade setup potentially. Last high before the low becomes significant, but again we moved 25 pips, the market pulled back inside. Then they extended it down 50 pips and pulled it back inside. So we have a peak formation high for the week and a peak formation low. But importantly, traders can start to lay the groundwork and say, okay, if the market extends lower, I'm expecting something at the 25 pip increment. Timings wise, we're at the end of the 12 candle window. We get a third push to the low, pulls back inside, pin hammer, not to say that traders needed to go long, but we can expect to see either the market trade through there, which it didn't, it found support, came back inside, three pushes, stop hunting traders who were short, and then the fast, quick move to the low of the day, 50 pips below, giving us our W reversal um, back inside, and then pulling back in and heading into Wednesday. Wednesday's Asian range forms a peak formation. The market hits it a second time at the Europe Open at the 25 pip increment box. So it's formed a peak formation from high to low that is 25 pips. It hits it again at the Europe 
London opened on a 1, 2, 3. So again, the round numbers are significant, but the high of the day is important. So instead of the market swinging back and forth, we're working the high. Pulls back inside, hits the high again. Stop hunts the low of the day. Comes back up a third time, working the high of the day at the numbers for a 50 pip move down. So they put in the middle structure, which went below the numbers. So obviously if the stops are down here, there's a high probability that the market's going to go here and then potentially right through to the numbers. But again, we're inside of a 25 pip box. They're just trading off of the bottom and top of the box, but they're taking traders up with the technicals, with the trend, chasing the longs before consolidating, trapping the volume in the upper 25 pip box before hitting the stops. Going to Thursday, the market drops down into the lower 25 pip box and makes a new low. Hits the low again a second time. We took out the low of the day first, pulled it back inside, hit it a second time, made a new low, pulled it back in for a third push towards the lower 50 pip box. The market pulls back up, taking out the swing high. So we now have a higher high for jamming back inside, giving us our W formation on the numbers inside the peak formation low. Breakout traders would have simply traded the break of this with the pin hammer, but the traders who were in on the W would have got in on the break of the inside bar possibly. Some traders would have got in at numbers when they recognized that if this trade was expiring in the lower 25 pip box and they're jamming them into the peak formation low but not taking it out, squeeze, boom, 75 pip move back up to the high. And as we head into Friday's session, the market has pulled back 25, almost 50 pips before giving us a peak formation low and a peak formation high. And we're currently working the low of the day. So they've just slightly expanded the range. We may now see them get traders who are short in the middle and hit the high of the day. But 25 to 50 pips outside of these boxes, so the upper 25, the lower 25 could become significant for either a sell high setup. If the market was to break through, we would target that upper box, possibly the high of the previous day, or head back down towards yesterday's low. So every 25 pip increment, the market has the potential to either be exhausting the move. So we have a, a so far we have a high of the day in place. Although we're inside of yesterday's range, we have a high of the day in place and we have a new expanded low of the day in place. So we'll take a look at the Euro. Good example of a template opening up on Monday inside of the peak formation low of Friday and the peak formation from uh, Thursday. But the market uh, in Asia, so we put our strike zones at the 25 pip increment. The market pushes through in the extended Asian range before hitting it a second time. High of the day and pulling back inside and hitting it one more time before taking out the middle structure, and then stop hunting to the low of the day. So we have a 25 pip range with the market having pushed into the upper box, taking out Friday's high, comes back down to the low of the day at numbers, gives us our shortened W formation. So right away traders, if you're short off the low of the day or you're short in this trade, you have to be thinking the minimum is going to be up to the upper 25 pip box. I mean, it can fail at the high of the day, but if this market is pulling back and we're going to do a measured move of the larger structure, we're looking at at least a full expansion, which takes this trade up into the upper box. Um, or if you're trailing this, or if you're trying to squeeze more out of a winning trade, you can be thinking upper part of that upper box, and it doesn't have to get to the numbers as we see. This is why it's important that if market gets up that far, it starts to go into consolidation and you've got a profit target sitting at the numbers. There's probably a reason why they're not going to the numbers because 
again, think there'd be a ton of orders possibly sitting right at the numbers. And I heard one of the guys talk about this. Uh, don't put your orders right at the round numbers unless you're getting in at market. Put it, you know, a few pips below, a few pips above whatever you're targeting for longs or shorts. But uh, just coming back to what we're talking about, these 25 pip increment movements coming out of the Asian range. This is a fantastic example of a nice tight consolidation. These are the ones that are obviously easier to see because we have our high and our low of the day. The market made new highs on Monday. Drops down 25 and then 50 pips. Obviously hit stops at the top of the day, taking breakout traders in long, chasing the early long before hitting the lows and pulling back inside of the range. But we're inside of the 25 pip box. If we're going to be buying or selling, we want to be buying low or selling high. This trade breaks back through the high of the day. Breakout pullback continuation. Hits the high of Monday in the U.S. session. One, two, three down. Pulls back. Hits at one, two, and then breakout three. But again, we're you know, just talking numbers. Goes through the 25 pip box, breaks out, pulls back, continues the move, consolidates at the upper 25 pip box for a 50 pip move from the high of the day. Next day, we're back inside of the box. The market breaks back out, pulls back in at the end of the Asian window with our little W formation at the low of the day and a pin hammer to start the session off. Market trades out off the bottom of the 25 pip box for a breakout pullback continuation. Paul Dieter Jones talks about if a market's working in one direction, don't try to fight it. And breakout pullback, trade with the trend. Goes up another 25 pips, so again, 25 and 50 pip movements. Go back to the previous day, 25 and 50 pip movements. That was a 25 pip stop hunt down before making the move. Market goes up in the U.S. session, hitting the high of the day, pulling back one, two, three to the numbers, pin hammer, middle structure for our M formation at the high of the day. So again, we went up 25, pulled back, extended the range into the U.S. open to the upper 25 pip increment level 50 pips total but 25 and 25 next day we go back into consolidation and again just on that Wednesday we're working the high of the day they work the high of the day they worked it a third time so you're working the high for the move back it's not a breakout continuation they're working the high and pulling back pinning the high pulling back we go into consolidation. So we could say strike zone down here or strike zone up here or at the top box. Okay. The market works the low, extends the low down, comes back and stop hunts traders who are short chasing the move in the middle of the box before hitting the low again, pulling back. And then hitting the low a third time. They're working the low. They're working the low. They're working the low. Where are we? We're 25 pips below the Asian range. They don't need to go to the numbers. As you can see, there's reasons why they may not be going down here. There could be a ton of profit-taking orders down here. They don't want the market to get there. They want to trap volume quickly. They reverse the market, put a peak formation low in and move quickly back to hit traders who were short at the Europe London Open. Pinning the bottom, okay, pinning the box, but they're working down. One, two, three, pin hammer. Stop hunting traders from Wednesday, uh, Wednesday shorts before giving us our M structure. And again, Asian range, upper boundary, Timings wise, we're expiring, we're running out of time. Market pulls back at the end of the 12 candle window. Goes one, two, three, one more time. Gives us our right shoulder for our double top and reversal before aggressively stop hunting the low of the day. 
25 pips below, 25 pips above, but just up into the next 25 pip box. We come into Friday. We're in consolidation currently as we speak. We're still inside of the 25 pip box. We have a low of the day and we have a high of the day. And we have a low of the Asian range. And as they're heading towards the low, we could see them work the low, work the low for a stop hunt high or breakout pullback, working the low continuation. But we're 25 pips inside of a 25 pip box. If this market was going to trend, this could potentially be an area that it moves towards and then works underneath for a continuation or it works the low, works the low, works the low for a 25 pip stop hunt to the low possibly a reversal to the top side, but if it's trending, it'll work back underneath for a move down through the redrawn low of the day. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. 25 and 50 pip increments. Keep it simple. You should be able to have a thesis when the market's working one side, if it's going to be a reversal day or a trend trade, but these 25 and 50 pip increments are very important because it gives you a, a great understanding if the market is going to be setting up for a larger trade later on or a follow through continuation move for a measured move. End the week on a strong note. Enjoy the great debate. Have a great weekend and may the market Hi go traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.